Birmingham City Schools Communications Officer Cheryl Stewart here today with Superintendent Dr. Mark Sullivan. Now, we've completed the first semester and now we are well into the second half. So tell us, how does that look for our students? So Cheryl, first of all, I cannot say enough in Birmingham City Schools, I can't say this enough, in Birmingham City Schools, our main business is teaching and learning. And when our educators, when our scholars returned in August for the new school year, they went straight to work. Uh, they were focused on the knowledge and the skills that each scholar requires in each class at every grade level. Our goal was to ensure that all students are taught so that they can grasp the lessons in all subjects at their grade level and and beyond. So when, and, and you know this Cheryl, that at a certain point during the year, uh, we have to assess the progress of our students and we're at that point. So we can make adjustments to our teaching and our learning so that we can support every scholar in every classroom. So we did our mid-year assessments in December and now we're getting ready for our next steps. So, so where do we go from here? What are those next steps? Cheryl, our educators have identified individual student needs, and as you know, we want all of our third graders to read on grade level by the time they end school this year. We also want our high school students to excel in the ACT because we know it opens doors for opportunities at the collegiate level, and we want all of our students to be prepared for the next grade level. So our educators are laser focused throughout the school district with teaching and learning blitz. And uh, they are sharing information with parents and the community so that our scholars are supported whenever possible. And our high school students, they have a blitz, it's called an ACT blitz, where they are studying ACT skills and strategies to better improve their performance on the ACT. In the spring, our high school students will take the ACT, our mm -hmm. elementary students will take the ACAP, and, and these assessments will help us gauge our progress and effectiveness in our teaching and learning in classrooms throughout our school district. So I guess what you're saying is this is a crucial time in our schools. Absolutely, Cheryl. And, and we know the Alabama legislature just started its 2025 session and there is still a lot of talk about school choice and education. But I tell people all the time, Birmingham City Schools are ahead of others when it comes to school choice. Cheryl, you are absolutely correct. Our scholars have choices in Birmingham City Schools. Right now, our scholars can still apply for our early college programs uh, and our academies. We offer early college at Woodlawn High School, and we have launched a very, a very on new early college program at Wienone High School, which I'm very proud of. These students can earn up to 60 hours of college credit by the time they complete their high school diploma. So Cheryl, what that means is that students can graduate from high school and they can walk into college as college juniors. Early college at Woodlawn has opened so many doors for so many scholars uh, to provide them with a running start to their collegiate uh, and careers as well as their success. And we're looking forward to similar, to similar results from Winona High School. Success starts early in Birmingham City Schools. So, so now that you mentioned starting early, let's talk about another level of success and, and, and being early. Tell us what's going on with pre-K. So yeah, sure, you're right, pre-K is starting early. We have free pre-K classes throughout our school districts and applications are currently being accepted. Children, we know, get a better chance for success if they start early. So in August, we will be expanding the number of pre-K classes that we have in Birmingham City Schools with the opening of our new early learning center in the former North Roebuck School. We look forward to having and welcoming dozens of new scholars to this free first class pre-K program. Cheryl, before we wrap it up, I want to give a huge shout out to the students at Southampton K-8 School. They won the Altec Challenge for their Hygiene Hub innovation. Now, uh, these students have captured more recognition, more than just winning that award, but they call, captured some state level recognition. So here's a piece from our very own Fred Davenport. From winning the 2024 All Tech Challenge to now being a state winner in the 2024-2025 Samsung Solve for Tomorrow competition, these Southampton KA students are true models of success in Birmingham City Schools. 
Out of more than 300 schools in Alabama who competed in the challenge, Southampton came out on top and won $12,000. This excitement is very, very special to us. I feel like we worked hard. I feel like we did what we had to do. I feel like we made it a long way, and I feel like that we deserve to like win. The South Korean tech giant challenge students across the United States to come up with ways to solve pressing community issues while incorporating STEM. Southampton used their initiative to combat period poverty and diaper insecurity in the Pratt City community through their hygiene hub. It truly warms my heart. Um, I know where the students, you know, they're so concerned about the community and to come up with this innovative project. It just, you know, it takes it to the next level. When it comes to the data. One out of four girls suffer from period poverty. Mm -hmm. One out of five families suffer from doctor insecurity. And that's why it was important for you all to really tackle this, right? Yes, sir. So many women out here get embarrassed for not having the products that they need. We just decided that it's important to end period poverty and doctor insecurity because of that. Now this is the story all about how we're breaking hygiene hopes to our town. The scholars used a familiar television show's theme music to help convey those stats during the All Tech Challenge, but they added a more innovative and eco-friendly idea for Samsung's challenge. We pretty much um, walk through the process of upcycling and what that looks like when it comes to inserting the clothes into the machine. And we'll start doing the process of tearing the clothes up and washing them and putting cotton into it, then putting and that will create the pads and the diapers. And from that, the needs assessment is done on the app or website. This variant of the Hygiene Hub initiative will not use ready-made products, but instead focus on producing reusable pads and diapers from recycled cotton clothing. Meanwhile, Southampton's principal, Mr. Frank Willis, says he's happy to see his scholars be awarded for their innovative thinking. Well, I'm very, very proud, but while I'm proud, I'm really not I'm not uh, shocked by it because I work with these kids every day. I know they're more than capable. So, you know, their capabilities don't, they, they don't ever shock me. Southampton has advanced to the next level to compete in the national competition for a chance to win $100,000. I'm Fred Davenport, BCS Media. Sure, these students are so impressive. They are innovative and they show uh, that they can think outside of the box to address community and environmental concerns. You know, this is just another example of what we say when we say success in Birmingham. Birmingham City Schools Show, success starts here.